Ciao and welcome to Geo's Paintbrush, where five minutes is all it takes to be blown away by one of the world's greatest artists. Scholars suspect that the oral tradition of stories that the Greek poet Homer so beautifully recorded and captured in the Odyssey, probably written in the 8th century BC and probably by a single poet, began as early as 1000 BC. In the Odyssey, Odysseus faces countless obstacles as he tries to sail home with his men back to Ithaca following the decade-long Trojan War. Having angered the gods with his arrogance, Odysseus' journey, while ultimately successful, is long, arduous, unpredictable, and dangerous. And yet he carries on, he endures. And so, from the very beginning, a journey by sea has served as the primary metaphor in Western art for life's journey, for the challenges, dangers, aspirations, joy and anguish, the will to continue, and the urge to live, that are universal components of the human experience. In today's show, we'll consider a fascinating large-scale outdoor sculpture by contemporary artist Nancy Rubens that Dana and I experienced at the San Diego Museum of Contemporary Art in La Jolla, California a few years ago. Entitled Pleasure Point and completed in January of 2006, this thought-provoking sculpture calls to mind the ancient journey by sea metaphor with a 21st century twist. It's installed evocatively in a beautiful seaside setting. Thanks for joining us. Nancy Rubin's notion of taking common objects in our lives, universally understood in their purpose and rich in their history, full of suggestion, connotation, and symbolism, and employing such objects as the materials for enormous large-scale public sculptures like Pleasure Point, pictured here, is a fascinating approach, full of possibility, of potential. In addition to the rich symbolism and mythology of the object selected, Rubens, in thoughtfully defining their physical relationship to one another, in creatively determining the means by which the work as a whole is exhibited, and in selecting a setting, an outdoor environment to serve as an exhibit space that becomes one with the sculpture, that itself is beautiful and full of possibility and meaning, in its relationship to the work produced, achieves a harmony with Pleasure Point, a complex unity that is everything art should be. Pleasure Point is interesting, original, beautiful, thought-provoking yet emotional, accessible to all who approach it with an open mind, and deeply rooted in an important aspect of what it means to be human. The more I reflect on this work, the more I am intrigued by its resonance. Pleasure Point is composed of steel rowboats, canoes, and surfboards, connected to one another by stainless steel wire. The piece faces the Pacific Ocean, which is just yards away with an easy sight and sound. The sculpture is affixed to the museum building, placed hanging over a back terrace. The sky serves as a backdrop for the sculpture, during daylight hours adding a seemingly endless blue sea behind the boats and at night an inky darkness, one envisions being familiar to sailors from every era. While these recreational pleasure crafts continue to be recognizable as boats, canoes, and surfboards within the sculpture, the new composition created varies depending on one's angle on the terrace. From one angle, the work appears to be the aftermath of a violent collision of crafts of various colors and sizes, coming to a point. Is there irony in the title then, Pleasure Point? with all of the pleasure crafts converging on a single defined point, as if the outcome of all our journeys is destined to be the same, ending in collision and ruin? And yet the arrangement of the crafts seems to suggest a careful haphazardness, a chaos that possesses an underlying organizing principle, a balance beneath the surface, a unity in the new form. From another point of view, the boats appear to be on the precipice, perched rather precariously, about to fall completely off the building, perhaps from the sky, suggesting a rather fragile, tenuous state of existence, capturing that sense of an uncertain destination, an unclear future, with a hint of danger, of sailing into the horizon and falling off the face of the earth itself. And yet from another angle, the entire sculpture seems to be magically suspended in the air. Robert L. Pincus of the San Diego Union Tribune writes, There is something gravity-defying about the art's relation to the museum, which is one of its visual pleasures. And I agree. 
These vehicles of sea transport, recreational transport in particular, for vacationers, leisure boaters, beach bums, and sun worshippers, rather than merchant marines, commercial fishermen, or soldiers like Odysseus sailing home from war, composed in this manner, hovering just above our heads, take on a sort of supernatural status, suggesting that there's something mystical, powerful, maybe spiritual about our journeys about our need to explore, to take risks, to defy caution, to venture out into the unknown, perhaps even about our relationship to the sea. What I find emotionally powerful about Pleasure Point, Rubin's first sculpture using boats, is how these individual crafts, made by human hands, take on an appearance of a single junk heap, identifiable in their essence, but no longer capable, at least in this form, of fulfilling their function. On one level, it's as if they've been tossed aside, abandoned, no longer valued, wasted, and the discarded objects of a modern commercial society is certainly a theme in Rubin's work, and one cannot help but wonder what else we discard, fail to recognize as valuable, what these objects symbolize. Furthermore, from one angle, this sculpture appears to be pointing directly, almost longingly, out to sea, to the Pacific. This jumble of small watercraft, in this setting, so close to the ocean and secured to the building, Pincus describes the building as the pedestal on which the sculpture is exhibited, and tied securely to each other with steel wire, evokes in me a sense of loss, a memorializing, a static commemoration of what once was, perhaps of our failure to recognize something deeply rooted in human history and our collective psyche, that is valuable, that like these watercrafts, has been displaced in the 21st century, that no longer functions as it should, that no longer fulfills its purpose, and that leads to nothing. Maybe what we've done is replace our need for discovery, for an authentic and difficult journey through the course of our lives, for growth and adventure and exploration, with banal leisure pursuits, with the pursuit of pleasure in our non-working hours, in effect, reducing all that is valuable and inspiring and full of potential in the human experience to material objects of our pleasure. And Rubin shows us the result, in the end, another heap of disposable objects on our landscape. One way to look at Pleasure Point, then, is as a sad testimonial to our separation from our essentially human, natural urges, from our beginnings, and perhaps from our relationship with the natural world caught up, usually without thought, in a world we fill with objects, with things we've produced en masse, and eventually discard before moving on to something else. Standing there in La Jolla, looking at the beautiful expanse of the Pacific Ocean, listening to the waves roll in under that bright California sky, beneath these small boats of various shapes and colors hanging above you, affixed permanently to a building, instead of bobbing up and down in the water as they make their way across the horizon. I am struck by how Rubens, a Texas native who now lives and works in California, offers both a deep longing sadness and a beautiful creative dynamism, grief at something lost, but also an original, energetic, almost mystical element in what's taken its place. In short, this is the essence of human experience on this planet. As an art writer at EFLUX, an online network for international visual artists and museums, says of Rubens, she has worked with discarded materials such as water heaters, mattresses, and airplane parts since the mid-1970s. And even though her work demonstrates the excesses of consumer culture, she is more interested in the energy created in the compositional structure of her pieces. Rubens takes full advantage of the colors and shapes of the material she uses to create sculptures that act as large, elaborate drawings. And what a fascinating, complex drawing her sculpture Pleasure Point is. Grazie mille e ciao. And it isn't